And good morning YouTube, this is Chuck and, and I'm back and got another story for you today and this is going to be a sad one, it's a firefighter story. And uh, this happened here at this intersection on October 8th, 1994. And the crosses here commemorate what happened and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Now before I do that, let me give you a little bit of a pan around to show you where we're at. This is uh, Arizona State Route 87, 17 miles south of Payson. And the intersection State Route 188 that goes down toward uh, Roosevelt Lake, where we just came from. You go down this direction on the highway, that takes you down to the Metro Phoenix area. It's a busy highway. A lot of activity down here. When I used to work, for, when I worked for the fire department, I don't know how the lighting is, let me come around this way. When I worked for the fire department, uh, we covered about 35 miles of this highway. And the reason why we did is quite simply because there wasn't anybody else to do it. And there's no other communities down here. There's no other, no other stations. And uh, the folks from the south end, from the Phoenix metro area, the, the uh, Fort McDowell Tribal Department, Fire Department, they respond up part way. And then, and then uh, like I say, we respond about halfway. They respond the other half. There's a lot of stuff happens on this highway. It's a busy highway, especially on weekends. But uh, this accident here, it uh, God, I don't even know how to talk about it. Even now, all these years later, it's, I'm having trouble keeping my thoughts together to talk about it. Let me see if I can get through this. This second take, I messed up the first one. But what happened was, it was on a Friday and it was senior ditch day for Thunderbird High School in Phoenix. And there were five girls in a little car that went to Roosevelt Lake, I guess with a bunch of other folks, uh, on senior ditch day. So when they were coming back, let's step over here a little bit better and get, maybe try to get a little bit different angle on this. This hillside's kind of slippery. I don't want to fall on my butt while I'm trying to talk to you. Anyway, when they came up, uh, they were on their way home, and when they come up to that intersection, you can see the northbound lane where that pickup's going through right there. Well, there's a stop sign there. Well, they pulled up that stop sign, they stopped, and they waited till there was a gap in the traffic. And then they pulled across into the median, right where this pickup's turning, you see that other stop sign. Well, when they come up to that other stop sign, there was a motorhome, a big class A motorhome, that was in the turn lane, coming this way, getting ready to make a left turn to go on down to the lake. Well, the young lady that was driving that car, she uh, decided that uh, she didn't want to wait for that motorhome, so she ran that stop sign and started to make a left turn to head down south back toward Metro Phoenix. But what she couldn't see, the motorhome blocked her, was in that next lane over there, there was an F-150 Ford pickup doing about 70 mile an hour and the pickup t-boned the car and actually it was a it was a pretty stout little car for those one in those days and it didn't tear it apart like you think it might what it did is it spun it and it pushed it all the way down and it ended up right in the in the ditch right about below where i'm showing you right now so that's what that was what the accident was and let me tell you how we got involved well, we got dispatched to an auto accident here at this intersection. It was reported as being pretty serious. And uh, we had three engine companies. We only had one of them staffed with full-time members. Well, obviously, we can't send everybody out of town. So our policy was we'd send a single engine and a crew to calls down here. And if the supervisor could get supervisor coverage in town, then the supervisor would respond as well. Well, I was the, uh, the on-call supervisor. We called him the duty chief in those days. And uh, so I responded. Uh, I, I was able to, to, it was a Friday. My assistant chief was working, so he stayed behind to cover town. I responded down here. Like I say, 17-mile run, about, uh, oh, 18 and a half from actually from the station. And uh, I ended up being the first one to arrive here. There was no law enforcement or anybody else here. There were some bystanders that were stopped and they were uh, trying to render aid to the, to the victims. 
guy that was driving the pickup, he got an airbag drill bad uh, when he hit him, but he was actually out trying to help him. And right down where I showed you down here below me, with the little car, uh, it was a little, I think a little Toyota or something like that. And there was five high school aged girls in it. Four of them were seniors. The other one was a junior and she was the little sister of one of the other ones. And the one had been, already been extricated. She was laying in the ditch and there were some bystanders doing CPR on her. And uh, so I got there, I did a quick triage, uh, calling for more resources. I called for four medical helicopters. And uh, there was an ambulance not too far behind us, the first ambulance, and of course they didn't have, I think they had three ambulances available, so they called the other two down here. And uh, so anyway, as soon as my engine crew got here, we got to uh, extricate the, the rest of the young ladies out of the vehicle. And uh, we ended up right, we stopped the highway patrol when they finally got here they stopped traffic up at the top of that hill where that second car is and we had four medical helicopters sitting in that roadway right there and make a long sad story if we, our crew pronounced the first gal deceased on the scene the one that was laying in the ditch and we extricated the other three or the other four flew them all and three of them died now, what was some, kind of surprising about that is there was not, they all died of blunt force trauma. There was not a lot of blood. The car didn't get tore up. There was no, like we say in the trade, there was not a lot of bone showing. It did not look like those young ladies were injured as bad as they were, but they were. Uh, and I can say only one of them survived. I'm sure, the, I'm sure the one that survived, I'm sure she's haunted to this day by experiencing that. But sad story a bad day on the highway let me tell you a little another little sidebar about this remember i told you it was senior ditch day and senior ditch day uh they went to the lake well these girls all five of them they all looked like they could have been sisters two of them were but the other three looked alike they all had the same hair design hairstyle the same color hair they were all thin build they all kind of looked alike they were all wearing bright colored flowered bikinis with Daisy Duke shorts on the bottom. And we had five young ladies that were critically injured and five purses, and we never knew who was who. We had no idea what purse belonged to which young lady. Okay, for our work, for, for our work uh, you know, we just, they were patient number one through patient number five. But can you imagine the work that the highway patrol the Department of Public Safety, state troopers, what they had to go through to try to make sure that when they made those notifications, they were making the right notifications to the right parents for the right girls. Just a real sad thing that happened. Uh, there's a lot of wrecks that happened. I've got another one similar down the road. I'm going to do one of these days. But I've been wanting to tell this story for a while. And uh, sometimes my, my, the bad firefighter stories don't do very well, but I think this story needs to be told. If you've got children driving age, you got grandchildren driving age and you're watching this, that young lady, what was her mistake? Her mistake was like this car right here. She drove across there and made the mistake of not waiting for that motorhome to clear so she could see. And instead she drove out, did not see that pickup coming. And uh, it cost four lives that day. Big production, the highway was closed for hours and hours. So I'm gonna tell you as I always do, this is a pretty busy thing. We just came from down there. I'm on my way back home now. Figured a good day to do this. This is the second take on this, I messed up the first take. So what I'm gonna tell you as always is to take care of each other, love each other. If you've got young drivers, show them this video. Tell them that, you know, you can wait 10, 15 seconds for somebody to clear because that the driver of this little car didn't do that and there were four lives lost here this day. There's a lot of people drive by this intersection and see these crosses up here on the hill and have no idea what the story is behind it. But now if you drive past here and you see it, you'll know what that story is. So until I talk to you again, I'm just gonna tell you that uh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, 
tragedies happen. Sometimes us firefighters, uh, as I've always said, when we come to work in the morning, we don't know what we're going to do that day, and this was one of those kind of days. So the next one I come back to you with, I'll try to come back to you with something a little more upbeat. But for right now, I'm just going to tell you, until I talk again, peace out.